The Hugh Freeze era is officially underway in Auburn, Alabama, as spring practice has started for the Tigers. But what are some things that we need to keep a pulse on? You know how we feel about spring practice here. It's great for taking a temperature. It's not great for making absolute statements about your football team. At the end of the day, this is still just 15 practices. But what are some things to watch? I'm watching this transfer group like a hawk because you brought in 12 transfers via the portal with Hugh Freeze and this staff and there's some guys that are going to play this is not a move for Auburn where you're just trying to add depth to some spots and maybe shore up some position groups no you brought in 12 guys that are going to contribute for you when you come to the fall so how are they meshing are they able to get up to speed at practice are they figuring out the scheme and finding their niche in the in, in the in the offense or defense whatever it ends up being how are they fitting and what is the learning curve for them in getting adjusted? Because I, I, I can speak from being a transfer player myself. There is some things that have nothing to do with football that take some time for you to get comfortable as a football player. New surroundings, new class schedule, new people, new teammates. A lot of newness is going on for these 12 transfers. And this was the answer for you to try and offset some of the things that you didn't have personnel-wise on your roster a season ago. This is where modern college football is heading. This is, this is where Auburn is going to succeed or fail in the fall. A lot of it has to do with the integration of these transfers into your football program. So we're keeping an eye on that, especially on the defensive line have to get better in the trenches the defensive line they've done a lot via the portal whether it's the linebacker or the edge position in that front seven that defensive line and linebacker group are they able to get up to speed and able to mesh more thoughts on that in a second but if you have not yet subscribed to the on three youtube channel we got you covered spring practice into the fall year round we're talking college football here every single day so make sure you're locked in also follow me on instagram as well as on twitter at jd Pacel. Now, we're going to give you a lot of spring notes and intel and thoughts throughout the spring period, but also make sure you're locked in over on Auburn Live, our Auburn On3 site. Get a membership there. They do a phenomenal job. They will keep you in the know as well. We also got to take a close look at the temperature of this quarterback room. You got Robbie Ashford. You still have TJ Finley for now, and you got Holden Griner. Now, the way that this thing is shaping up, again, they're, they're not narrowing reps right now during spring practice, but it looks like Robbie Ashford is the leader in the clubhouse to be QB1. Now, TJ Finley obviously played at times throughout his Auburn career, went into the fall last year as your starter. I happen to believe, based on the feeling around Auburn, that he will potentially transfer out after the spring if he doesn't end up winning the job in the spring. And then you also have Holden Griner, who I think will, at the very least, throw his hat in the mix. And as a talented player, was highly recruited, all that. But here's what I think is interesting. You will be able to gauge Robbie Ashford's performance level, and you'll be able to gauge the staff's comfortability with Robbie Ashford as their starting quarterback based on what happens post-spring. If Robbie Ashford knocks it out during the spring, I believe, and I don't, I don't say this with any level of absolute but I do believe that T.J. Finley would then, by just using our logic here, transfer out. You would also be able to gauge how comfortable they are with Robbie Ashford by nature of who they go after post-spring practice. Because there's going to be some names out there. I believe that you're going to have some of these high-profile quarterback battles, guys that were really highly recruited out of high school, not going to win the job. They'll be on the open market. And if you bring in a high-profile guy in your Auburn, that means that you are expecting him to have a quarterback battle in the fall with Robbie Ashford, okay? So you'll have a high-profile guy, Robbie Ashford, going after it in the fall. And if you have somebody that's just learning the playbook during the summer one and summer two sessions and trying to get up to speed for the fall, it's a little bit risky. But again, you know how they feel about Robbie Ashford because they're okay with that risk if they don't feel great about Robbie Ashford. Now if they go and get somebody who... Maybe they don't have a, a strong track record of being a starting quarterback, and it looks like just a depth play. That means they feel confident about Robbie Ashford being their starter going into fall camp. I believe a lot of that will be predicated on what happens during the spring. So the temperature of this quarterback room, I think all of it 
is based on the domino of how does Robbie Ashford perform this spring in the new system. And a big variable with that is who's stepping up to be a playmaker for Robbie Ashford this spring. He did some work in the portal. Rivaldo Fairweather, Nick Martyr, both guys that are big body targets. And Hugh Freeze has said as much, you need big bodies, big targets to go compete in the SEC Saturday in and Saturday out. You also got Camden Brown, who was at Auburn last year, obviously, but I expect him to take another step forward. They were really excited about him during last fall camp. And whoever ends up playing quarterback will only be able to be as good as these targets allow them to be. Not limited to these targets that I name, but obviously the wide receiver room as a whole. Can you have playmakers at Auburn that will be able to stretch the field for you? I think they've got some guys in-house that could do it. Now, have they done it consistently or have they done it in an Auburn uniform just yet? Remains to be seen. You can't answer that with an absolute yes just yet. But I'm very excited to see what happens within this new scheme at Auburn under Philip Montgomery. Because you look at Philip Montgomery's track record, and I see two things. One, an offensive mind that has equipped a lot of different quarterbacks to have success, a lot of different styles of quarterbacks. Guys like Case Keenum that are your prototypical stand in there, deliver the football, and guys like RG3 who are more dual threat, will use their legs, similar to a Robbie Ashford. So they're going to play to the quarterback strengths. That's who Philip Montgomery has been throughout his career. That's the first thing. Able to mold his offense to a quarterback skill set. The second piece of that, looking at the offense as a whole, is Philip Montgomery routinely has done more with less from a recruiting standpoint. And this is not to dunk on Auburn recruiting. I don't think it's a secret that Brian Harson didn't exactly leave the cupboard stocked when it comes to offensive weapons. But you look at his history, had great offenses at Houston. They weren't blowing it out of the water recruiting-wise. Had great offenses at Baylor. They had some players that they put in position to succeed, but it wasn't like we were looking at signing day classes and saying, yeah, Baylor in the top five yet again. That wasn't really the story we were having with Baylor. That wasn't the story we were having with Houston. So what I'm trying to tell you is the weapons at Auburn will be in position to where if they win their matchup one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to have some big plays available. It comes down to can you win outside at the receiver position and quarterback, can you give us something to work with? Okay, that's a very simplistic way to say it, but all that's to conclude with I believe that they have some pieces in-house at Auburn that can allow them to be successful. Now, taking the temperature of that during the spring will be very, very insightful to how impactful they can be going forward. And all of that, obviously, on top of what can your transfers do for you? You overhauled the roster in a lot of ways through the portal. How much of an impact can they have? So excited to watch spring practice for Auburn as it continues to roll on. Excited to keep tabs on their spring game. Uh, like I said, if, if you have not yet gotten a membership over at Auburn Live, they're going to keep you in the know as well. So make sure you're locked in there. Make sure you're subscribed here. Football's back, man. Spring is rolling. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.